One, two, three. Three, two, one. One, two, three. Three, three, D. Way I am, man. Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. Today, we are going to revisit the Prusa Mark IV, the Mark IVs, and the Core 1. Stay tuned. There's a lot of debate over the brand Prusa, Prusa's price points, and what you actually get for your money. So we thought it would be a good idea to give you guys at home the lowdown on what we believe is the actual ethos behind Prusa and the company and where your money's going. So, my first ever Prusa purchase was a Prusa Mark IV. Bog standard, stock, kit version, which I really enjoyed assembling the kit. I took it home from work on a Friday, spent some time Friday evening and then a bit of Saturday assembling the kit, building the printer, and then I compared it to an out-of-the-box version, so the assembled equivalent. Side by side, there was zero difference in print quality, aesthetics, or anything. Then, a little bit later down the line, Prusa announced that they were releasing the Mark IV S. So for those of you at home who aren't familiar with the, the key differences between the Mark IV and the Mark IV S, I shall explain. So they did a couple of little tweaks. Pretty much most of the parts came to the extruder and the hot end side. As you can see from the Mark IV, we have a very small cooling fan, part cooling fan. There were some other parts on the machine that were printed predominantly with PETG. Now, for those of us that were feeling the need to have our printers enclosed because we were wanting to print ABS, ASA or whatever, the PETG was becoming soft in the enclosure, thus causing issues. You would end up having to periodically retighten your belt on the bed and, and all kinds of different things, even... I've had problems on my previous version where I was constantly tightening up the belt on the x-axis. The teeth kept on slipping through the PETG printed part. So Prusa had basically acknowledged this and offered anybody that owned a Mark IV printer the chance to upgrade it to a Mark IV S. If I remember rightly off the top of my head, the upgrade kit was about £80. And for that, you got all the upgraded extruder parts so better parts cooling everything was replaced with pc cf so a lot more temperature resistant filament making the use of your machine in an enclosure perfect perfect everything down to the last minute details they implemented a few more little tweaks there was new firmware updates that, that came out on the original Mark IV where you didn't have the touchscreen display functionality because it wasn't enabled in the firmware. That's now since been rolled out so you can use the rotary knob or the touchscreen to control your printer. Really, aesthetically, there wasn't very many changes to this point and it still produced exceptional quality prints. I mean, from testing overhangs from the Mark IV to the Mark IVs, the Mark IVs literally smashed it. The, the overhang test files that they gave you with the machine or you could download from printables, 70 degree overhangs with this machine, no supports, is no problem at all. So with this in mind, the philosophy behind Prusa was they wanted to keep things community-based and open source. So instead of making a printer redundant, they made it upgradable. They give you the opportunity to practically rebuild it to the latest version that they have released. So this was the dawn then of the Mark IVs. It's evolving! Yeah! All the other leading brand manufacturers were producing Core XY machines, not Cartesian. Cartesian, Cartesian, Cartesian bed slingers. Pluses for a Core XY machine over a traditional bed slinger isn't really noticeable on smaller, lower height prints. It is more noticeable, shall we say, when you actually maximize the Z height. In simple terms, the higher or the taller you print, the more wobble you will get exaggerated to the top of your print, which will then show in your print as artifacts and whatever else. So you may see from lower down in your print, really, really nice, consistent print quality. As the machine gets to the extremities of its travel on the Z axis, you might start to see some banding or artifacts basically caused by the bed moving backwards and forwards, which will create very, very slight wobble. Core XY machine, you don't have that problem because the bed is traveling in a downward motion away from the extruder in very small increments, and it's the extruder that is actually doing all of the travel. So you don't encounter that problem with taller prints on a Core XY. 
that is one of the pluses. So again, Prusa then announced the release of the Core 1. Probably 12 months after the Mark IV S came out, they recognised there was a gap in their range, addressed it with their own version of a Core XY, and again, they gave users and owners the opportunity to upgrade their Mark IV S to a Core 1. My own personal machine started life as a Mark IV, it's now a fully functioning Core 1. Seeing me past the, the last two, two and a half years, and it's been kept current and up to date all the way through its life. There are quite a few components that are exactly the same on the Mark IV to the 4S to the Core 1, which makes it very, very easy to transition those parts across. Now, this is probably where the price comes in. So for me, personally speaking, I see a Prusa machine as an investment. They've proven to me personally, that the machine doesn't go out of date or become obsolete, it's made upgradable. So the initial purchase, yes, I bought this for however much it was in a kit version, but I now have the end result a fully functioning Core 1 that looks no different to a fully assembled out of the box Core 1 and performs no differently either. They are very, very committed on keeping their customers up to date with their current technology without forcing them into buying a new machine. There's a lot of other questions that people have to consider when they're looking at purchasing a machine. So if you've got a Mark IVs, for example, and you're wanting to make the step from PETG, PLA, TPU to ABS, ASA, PCCF, whatever, you're gonna need an enclosure. However you look at it, that is what you're gonna to need to print those materials safely and effectively. You wanna filter out the fumes, Effectively, you want to control the cooling temperature of the print while you're printing with those materials because otherwise you'll end up with warping and inconsistent print quality and lots of things that you don't really want and are going to make your life very, very hard. So you will need some form of enclosure. And if you want to keep it all in brand, matchy-matchy, nicey-nicey, you will go for the Prusa enclosure. But if you then couple the price of the Prusa enclosure with the price of your Mark IVs, you are then above the price that you would pay for a Core 1. So it makes perfect sense for £415 to buy the Core 1 upgrade kit, upgrade your Mark IVs to a Core 1, which then becomes fully enclosed. Now, they've added a few features into this mix that make printing a whole lot easier with these exotic filaments. You've basically got within the machine, not active chamber heating, but it will use the ambient temperature created from the build plate and the hot end to stabilize the actual chamber temperature by means of the exhaust fans. Simply what it does, there's a thermistor sat in the back of the machine. This is constantly monitoring the chamber temperature. Once you've hit the ambient temperature for the material that you're printing, the fans will basically exhaust any excess warm air to maintain that stable temperature. So you get beautiful prints every single time. Every single day. That is pretty much the, the lowdown. Now, technical wise, build volume wise, they all share the same size build plate. So we have 250 from left to right, 220 from front to back, and then we have 250 on the Z. The core one has the same size build plate, but will travel to 270 on the Z. So this will print fractionally higher than the standard Mark IV S or Mark IV. Other little things that have been implemented into the firmware, you have a vent on the top of the actual lid of the machine, which slides open and closed. Typically, PLA PETG doesn't require heated chamber. So if you get excessive heat within the chamber, it then causes the filament to soften, which then causes problems with the extruder gears. The filament's too soft for it to basically grip it, chews it up and it ends up clogging the machine. So this is quite a common anomaly with a lot of printers that have lids with them beginners especially who aren't sure think the machine comes with a lid that to use it all the time prusa again have identified this and before you can proceed to actually print and it knows that you're printing or you've sliced a g-code file for pla or pet g it will politely remind you to open the vent and check the vents open and confirm just a little touch that doesn't really take a lot but alleviates that frustration that it can cause if you should encounter a clog the other advantages of the Core 1 over the Mark IV series of printers is basically the footprint of the machine is going to take up a smaller footprint than the actual Mark IV or Mark IV S because this is a bed slinger so we need to allow plenty of room behind the machine for the bed to fully travel backwards and forwards whereas with the Core 1 with it being a Core XY 
the footprint of the cabinet is all you need. The other plus to this is these are fully stackable. So if you're in a production environment or anything else, you can literally take up to six of these machines and stack them on top of each other and side by side. You can reroute the spool holder if you want to tuck them right up to each other. So they thought about implementing space saving ideas with the core one as well. In terms of durability, it looks a very complex design machine, but it's very well thought out and it's very well engineered and very well put together. The actual Core XY frame cabinet shell is all individual pieces that are basically made from laser cut steel, which have then been powder coated in Prusa's lovely galaxy black finish. All of the panels are polycarbonate, very, very tough, very durable. Testament to this. We've seen Joseph stand on one of these. Right, so Chris just requested that I mimic Joseph's standing on top of the machine. So, here goes. Oh, dear. Oh, there we go. Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. Today, I am standing on a core one. He tried to replicate Uncle Jesse's shenanigans with the K1 that he did in his unboxing where the door flew open and smashed. This door is ridiculous. You know, it's solid. It's not going to break it's not going to shatter you're going to have to drop this machine from a very high height to actually cause damage aim for the bushes if you do cause damage it's as simple as replacing the single parts and then your machine looks like new again. It's really, really well thought out, well put together. One of the key aspects that we found with this machine that a lot of other manufacturers seem to overlook is FDM printers run on heat. Now heat causes things to expand and contract. So where you've got varied materials, each different type of material, i.e. steel, aluminium all expand and contract at different rates this can cause problems on a massive scale within the 3d printer because your tolerances are that fine you want the detail and accuracy to be spot on so if you've got any conflicting forces at play between steel aluminium whatever then that is going to show in your print quality prusa hats off to them they fully recognize this and everything within the machine is made from the same material types so all the parts that are going to be affected by expansion and contraction are made with the same stuff so that they'll all expand and contract at the same rate, giving you faultless print quality in simple terms. The aesthetics for the machine overall, this wouldn't look out of place in your office, in your living room, in your bedroom. It looks stylish, clean and polished. The overall component quality of the machine is great. I mean, we've used these on a daily basis now since we received ours. Chris has one in the studio. I have my own personal one in the workshop. They are always printing every day. They cause no problem. You just select your file, you select your material, you slice it, you send it over connect, and at the end of it, it's printed, done. One other thing that I will mention, as you can see, this Mark IV-S is fitted with an MMU. So for those of you who don't know what the MMU is, it's multi-material unit. So you can print with up to five different colors. This is also transitioned now to the core one. So if you wanted that capability on the core one, you absolutely have it. But we've held off because there is rumors within the Prusa community, a little bit more than rumors because Prusa have posted it on their blogs and Reddit and whatever else, that they are now working alongside Bontech who produce hot ends, extruder parts, nozzles, very well-known brand, very high quality stuff to basically implement an IDEX tool change system to the core one. What does this mean? Simple terms, this means that this will effectively become a miniature version of the XL with the tool changing heads. Speculation only at this point until it has been confirmed. We'll have up to seven tools. So seven extruders, which will basically give you the capability to use seven colors of filament or multi-material. Release dates on the IDEX system. I have tried to get sneaky intel from our contacts over in the Czech Republic at Prusa. Unfortunately, as we're already aware, unless you're part of the secret society that is withheld within Prusa, 
nobody knows. So currently we don't have an ETA. Would I speculate to say that they may save it for form next 2025? I'm not sure. It's a possibility. We might get a sneak peek at a prototype version of it then, but I'm not sure if it's actually been fully finalized. All the images that I have seen have been like CAD models up to this point. So CAD renders, not prototype functioning machines. But in principle, there is absolutely no reason at all why that can't be implemented on the machine. From the images I have seen, they basically run from the metal bar up to the top. So could be a reason why this bar was put in in the first place. We'll see. So yeah, as soon as we have any information or confirmation on when the release date is, we will let you guys know. There's a bit of a misconception over multicolor and multi-material. With this system, multicolor is the preferred option. You can, if you're very experienced and know what you're doing, get away with multi-material in this, but it isn't ideal. And the reason for that is because different materials require different print temperatures, different settings. So while the machine is switching out the, the different material, for instance, slot one, we have PLA, slot two, we've got PETG. We're using the PETG as a support material, PLA for our print material, because the two just will not stick together. So what it'll have to do is basically once it's switched the color it will then need to preheat the nozzle to the pet g temperature because that prints hotter than pla typically it's not the cleanest of systems you can get issues with clogging and whatever else when doing it through one hot end the beauty with a tool changing system is each nozzle is allocated its own parameters within the g code so if you've got on tool one pla tool two pet g PLA is going to be heated on tool 1. Tool 2 is going to be heated for PET G consistently. Basically, when the, when it swaps over and picks up the next one, it's going to be ready to go straight away. Those are alleviating the problem that you'll get with clogging and whatever else when it's switching out two different materials. It also makes for a very, very efficient multi-material, multi-colour system. So you have less waste. You've got the options to basically, instead of even printing out a purge tower, you can use the purge function to infill so basically it'll purge on the infill over a tower which gives you then zero waste so there's a lot of scope going forward yes they are more expensive than other brands but you have the peace of mind that you're not going to be left behind with your machine it isn't going to be outdated six months down the line it is going to be a tool that will carry you forward whatever your journey may be, whether it be hobbyist, small batch production, in a prototyping environment within your workplace, whatever it may be. So yeah, we don't currently sell the Mark IV anymore because it has been discontinued. But for anybody that does have the Mark IV, would like to look at obviously upgrading, the parts are still available. So you can make this journey yourself. Or if you own a Mark IV S and you would like to upgrade to a core one it's very very doable it's very enjoyable to me it was a no-brainer to take out from the big clunky enclosure that you get with for the mark IV or any of the other prusa machines to have a nice compact self-contained unit like this to me was just like yep yeah, this is what i need to do and i have no regrets doing that at all so yeah i hope you've enjoyed the video please find links to all of the products that i have mentioned in the video in the description below we do sell Mark IV S's, we do sell the MMU units, we do sell Core ones in all variants, and we do sell the upgrade kits. Please be sure to check out the link in the description for any of those. And if you've got any questions about any of these machines, or how hard it is, or any problems that we've encountered, or faults we may have identified, or whatever, please, please drop them in the comments box below. We will do our best to answer you as quickly as possible, but I hope you've enjoyed the video, found it informative and educational. I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye for now. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices on the market. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.